great uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Kirsten Wickelgren. Uh, let me just say very few words about her. She obtained her PhD uh, in the year 2009 from uh, Stanford University under supervision of Gunnar Karlsson. And uh, right after that, she obtained a prestigious American Institute of Mathematics fellowship, which uh, she spent at Harvard University for five years. Uh, she went to uh, the Georgia Institute of Technology afterwards. And since uh, 2019, she's been professor at Duke University. She's been working on the intersection or union of arithmetic and homotopy theory and uh, has a long list of impressive papers and collaborations and especially on uh, what she's going to talk about today which is an introduction to a1 homotopy theory using enumerative examples please go ahead thank you very much um, and there's also there are now notes um, for uh, these uh, talks, and um, I do I do realize they were posted a little bit uh, late, um, since tardiness is an almost universal human trait. You you all probably um, know what I mean. Uh, um, it. Uh, it, it does mean that I was up pretty late last night. So um, if my energy uh, starts to flag, it will be very much appreciated to have um, uh, feedback and help and corrections. Um, it's, it's really a, a, a pleasure to, to get to be here. And um, uh, so the, the, the more I get to uh, interact, um, uh, the better. And um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Oliver. Um, uh, so um, we're uh, going to use A1 homotopy theory uh, uh, to do some enumerative geometry. And enumerative geometry uh, let's say that what it does is it counts algebra uh, geometric Uh, objects um, over C. And uh, an example to, to say sort of what algebra geometric objects means, um, we can ask uh, how many lines meet uh, four lines uh, in P3. Um, so uh, a nice picture of this is that inside P3 of C, there's R3 where we're all in our, our own separate rooms. And uh, uh, inside R3, we could take four lines uh, in our rooms that don't, that don't intersect. And actually just uh, uh, ask uh, any, any friend, even who doesn't do math professionally, uh, how many lines uh, intersect all. So the answer, if you allow the lines to be complex is two. And in your own little room, uh, it might be two and it might be zero. Uh, the goal here is to introduce a one homotopy theory and, and have fun. Um, and, but we could also make a sort of concrete uh, thread to guide us is that let's make a goal to record uh, arithmetic information like whether those lines are over C or over R. Or over R. Um, Uh, about uh, geometric, those geometric objects that we're counting over some field K. And the number of these objects, these lines, uh, is going to be fixed over the algebraic closure, um, but it may vary over the field K. And um, we'll use as a tool this the A1 homotopy theory that we were discussing in um, Danny Krashen's taught lectures and um, Frederick Lees's uh, lectures due to Morel and Bavatsky, as we've seen. But, but let's uh, um, 
homotopy. Let's write it down to homotopy. Um, and let's start with some classical homotopy theory. Uh, we have a sphere uh, in dimension M, so we could take real numbers uh, whose, the sum of whose squares is one. And another uh, uh, useful way uh, to, um, to write this is, um, uh, it's equivalent, let's say, uh, to P and R over P n minus one, the, the R points of, of P n over the R points of P n minus one. And uh, there is a degree uh, from the homotopy classes of maps from, uh, from SN to SN to Z uh, that uh, roughly speaking counts the number of free images and we were trying to count. So given um, F SN, to SN uh, and uh, P and SN. Um, let's suppose uh, that we don't uh, crush the whole sphere or uh, one dimensional part to this P. So let's suppose S dot T dot for such that, that F minus one of P is um, a bunch of points Q1 through Q some capital N. And the degree of F, we'd like it to be something like N, capital N, it is. It's uh, the weighted sum of a local degree of F at these inverse image points. And the local degree can be defined in terms of that global degree again. Um, uh, is the local degree. So we'll let V be a small ball. We'll take a small ball in its inverse image. Uh, so be a small ball just containing QI, no other inverse image points. Uh, so such that F minus one of you intersect. Um, so you. U is our small ball containing QI, and it doesn't have any of the other QI in it. Minus one of P, it's just QI. Um, so then we can map U to, to V, and uh, we really wanna sort of map the boundary of these small balls. So this looks like V over the boundary of V or SN, and this looks like U over the boundary of U, which is also SN. And we have an induced map, and the local degree is the degree of this induced map. And we have a formula from differential topology um, telling us that instead of sort of, in some sense, uh, uh, recursively defining the degree of F in terms of a, a, another degree, um, we, we could make the local degree with calculus or compute the local degree with calculus. So we have a formula from differential topology. So we can pick local coordinates uh, near, near our points and express our, our function then as uh, um, a tuple of polynomials. So that, or a, a tuple of smooth, smooth maps, um, if it's smooth. Uh, so let x1 to xn be oriented uh, coordinates near qi. Uh, let y1, yn um, uh, be oriented coordinates near P. So then our function becomes a tuple of functions in the, in the XI 
top one top n r n to r n and we can take this Jacobian determinant we'll denote it by j to be the determinant of um, the partial of fi with respect to xi and then our, our local degree um, it depends on this determinant so the degree the local degree at qi of f is um, plus one if the Jacobian is positive and minus one if the Jacobian um, is negative. And a, a, a great um, uh, special case is if F is actually uh, uh, a complex analytic, so we've forgotten some extra complex structure, then F is going to preserve orientation, putting us always in this case. So let's say that F is a polynomial uh, map over C. And um, we'll suppose it doesn't have a multiple root. So this Jacobian, it's not zero. And then um, because there's this multiplication by I that tells us which directions we're going, uh, this has to be one. And we, um, we, we do get that the degree is counting the points in the preimage. And this might be the number of solutions to something you're interested in. So it's the number of solutions uh, to F1, F2, uh, Fn equals zero. And uh, a, a great example um, is the fundamental theorem of algebra. So if we have a polynomial, with complex coefficients of degree n in the usual sense, um, then its degree is also n in, in the topological sense. And we have uh, n solutions um, if, if they're all simple. It's the number of solutions to our, our polynomial. And uh, this is fantastic. Oh, the F1 um, were, were these folks here. So if, if, F is, um, if F is sort of encoding lots of equations at once. Uh, now those F, uh, they might um, have sort of a twisted target. So we can also count if the, if the F actually corresponds to a section of a vector bundle and we're not taking maps to some A1 or to some line, but that line is twisting over the, the space of our possible solutions. So remark, um, uh, we can also uh, count solutions to F equals zero, where F is a section of a vector bundle. rank and vector bundle. So here's our vector bundle V with its canonical map to its, its base um, X. Uh, and here's a section um, F for function. Uh, and uh, then the sum of local degrees of this F uh, is another invariant from homotopy theory. It's, it's the Euler class. So the, the Euler class of V um, can be computed with, with any section, and it's a sum over the zeros of our section of a local degree um, uh, of f. And in order to define this, we need to view f as a function. We can take a local trivialization of our vector bundle and some local coordinates, and we really must have an orientation um, so that we uh, don't wind up changing the value of our Jacobian as we change our choices. So rank n, and we'll talk more about oriented, oriented vector bundle. Um, so we can also count the, the solutions to, to, to such equations. Uh, here's an example uh, of doing that. So let's let our x be the Grossmannian. Uh, 
And the, the indexing convention going on here is it's parameterizing um, the P1s and P3, like in our, in our initial um, question. So that's also, so dimension two subspaces. Um, w in C4, or equivalently, the P1s and P3. Uh, the um, lines, um, the projectivization of W, this is where we take out the origin and um, mod out by scalar multiplication. So for all W and W and lambda in C star. And this sits inside the projectivization of all of C4, which is P3, or the C points of P3. Over this Grossmannian, we have a tautological bundle. So here's a rank two vector bundle called the tautological bundle. And um, it's defined so that over the projectivization of W, over this element of the base, we put W. So the, um, the vector space over this line here is the rank two vector space W. Um, so let's consider that question we started with, let uh, L1, L2, L3, L4 um, be four lines in P3. Um, uh, how can you tell if another line L meets say L1? It's that uh, there's um, in, in the, uh, the intersection of the, the corresponding Ws is not empty. So if you, if you take the um, wedge product of the forms uh, defining uh, um, L1, it's zero on L. And um, uh, there's uh, nice exercises that Sabrina Pauli has, has made that, that say a little more on this, but that means that the way we can characterize the lines meeting our four lines is as is the zeros of a, of, a vector, of a section of a vector bundle. So the lines meeting L1, L2, L3, L4, they're the zeros of F um, for F a section, depending on the Li of the following vector bundle. It's four copies, one for each line of wedge two of a stool over the grass money. Ah. So um, our section above a W, say at the first copy of this, it puts the restriction of the two forms defining L1 to W wedged, wedged together. Um, and that means uh, by the discussion that we were just um, uh, in, invoking, having, uh, that um, the number of lines is this Euler class, or Euler number, it's E of this same bundle, So if you believe that um, the, the many points of view on the, the Euler class from, from algebraic topology includes one where we can compute it with, with any section, and in particular, this means that um, uh, this number is independent of our choice of lines, Uh, of the choice of lines, as long as the associated section really did have isolated zeros, um, which happens when it's they're generally chosen or when they don't pairwise intersect. Um, and for that, we needed that this was always one so that we were working over C. So this, uh, then we can compute at least over C 
that the answer is two um, using cohomology of Grossmannians, the splitting principle um, for, for computing Euler classes from ways we'll get to later. Uh, and, and tools um, uh, of that sort. Um, so uh, we've been using a degree to count algebra geometric objects. And, and we'd like to do this over fields that are not R or C. Um, so Lan and Morell uh, came up with a notion of degree uh, for an arbitrary field K that reported more than what was happening over the, the algebraic closure. So um, uh, an evocative place to start is for a rational map from, from P1 to P1. And above, Uh, we had uh, this formula here, and um, uh, we remembered the sign of the Jacobian at each point. And Lan and Morel are going to allow us to remember more than just the sign of the Jacobian. Um, and they'll they'll do it by landing the degree in, in this in this um, uh, group. So the degree of f will be valued in the growth index bit group of k. Um, which we've seen from uh, Danny Fashion's talks or the, um, the VIT group uh, um, which recovers the growth index VIT group. And this is defined to allow for formal differences of um, symmetric non-degenerate bilinear forms. So we'll, we'll group complete, meaning we're allowed to subtract, even though we only started with an addition. And the addition that we're going to start with um, is perpendicular direct sum of bilinear forms. And we can also take the tensor product of bilinear forms of non degenerate um, symmetric bilinear forms. And we've seen the quotient of this on Monday and Tuesday. So the Witt group of, of K with the fundamental ideal and the Milner conjecture with the, the relationship of those quotients to a tall cohomology um, and Milner K theory uh, is also in the growth and deep group and also applies to give us tools to understand elements of the, of the growth and deep group. And the VIT group is what happens when we quotient the growth and deep group by, um, uh, by this hyperbolic form, uh, one, one plus minus one. Um, uh, so um, a useful uh, invariant of a bilinear form is the dimension of the vector space it's on. So this is the rank homomorphism. So um, the rank of a bilinear form, V uh, vector space V over K cross V to K is the dimension of, of V over K. And we can recover the growth in the VIT group from the VIT group. Um, we have a quotient to the VIT group and we also have a rank. And given a rank and its quotient to the VIT group, we get the element of GW of K that we might want to pin down. So this um, is a pullback. Um, we, we saw some uh, useful generators for the VIT group, which are um, which I'll, I'll put the notation for um, to, to get us all on the, on the same page. Um, so uh, stably, meaning after you group complete, uh, any any bilinear form, symmetric non-degenerate can be diagonalized. In fact, in characteristic two, you can diagonalize even without that, uh, even without group completing. Um, so that means our, our rank one forms are gonna be generators. So here, this is, was el the element of the growth index bit group. 
uh, associated to the bilinear form on K. Uh, that sends um, x, y to a, um, a, x, y. And over a field, we have this nice presentation. Um, so we take the tensor product of the two rank one forms corresponding to a and b, and we, we get the rank one form forms corresponding to a, b. And an elementary diagonalization shows that this diagonal um, bilinear form is the same under a basis change as this one, whenever u plus b is not zero. And these two together imply um, that uh, for any non-zero u, u plus minus u, u is one plus minus one, which is this hyperbolic element h. Um, and as an exercise, um, uh, we can show that, that uh, two implies three, and that um, this form here is also um, the one whose grand matrix um, looks like this, uh, which Danny Krashen um, uh, wrote. And you watch in characteristic two, but again, the group completion is, is okay. Um, let's get some get some examples. So, if this group is trivial then all our generators are the same and the rank gives you an isomorphism. Um, uh, for R, we have ones and negative ones for, for this group. And uh, the difference between the number of ones and the number of negative ones uh, is called the signature. have a, a map rank comma signature. And they have to have the same parity, um, uh, but this introduce, uh, induces a, um, an isomorphism to, to Z cross Z. Um, so this is, we diagonalize the form one, 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 minus one, minus one, and signature equals the number of ones minus number as well. Um, uh, uh, we saw in the Milner conjectures that um, the atoll cohomology with Z mod two coefficients gives us some, some useful uh, invariants. And one of these is the, the discriminant. Um, and so for uh, fields where we can compute atoll cohomology like um, FQ, uh, we uh, we get um, we, we get the um, the discriminant and, and these are enough to determine the entire uh, bilinear form. So this is an isomorphism to uh, z cross f q star over f q star squared, and um, we we have another interesting interesting term here in addition to our Z. And we have another interesting Z in addition to the, to the Z we started with. Um, we can keep going and, and get more interesting extra terms. So um, uh, if we had QP, we get another one. And more generally, uh, for a complete discretely valued field, um, we uh, can compute the, the VIT group as two copies of, of that of the residue fields. So we've got K, um, complete um, discrete valued field, uh, K residue field. So for example, we could take the P addicts or um, uh, the Laurent series in, in a formal variable. Um, and we have that the residue field is this finite field, and we'll assume that the residue characteristic is not two, and then we have that the the bit group is two copies of that of the residue field. Um, we're going to have transfers uh, uh, in a way lining up uh, with uh, Frederick de Gleese's talk 
um, but I want to introduce um, notation for them and, and a formula um, now to, to be able to talk about them. So let's let's give ourselves a separable field extension that's finite. Separable extension of fields. Um, and we have a trace map or a transfer from the bilinear forms over Z, and we need to get down to a bilinear form over K. And it will compose with the trace from, from Galois theory. So the sum over all the embeddings uh, into, into an algebraic closure. So if we have a bilinear form uh, over E, we can view V now as a vector space over K and apply the some of the Galois conjugates to get down to, to K. And this is still non-degenerate by, by Galois theory um, uh, and, and defines uh, the, the, the wanted map. Um, okay, so we have um, the, the growth indie bit group, the bit group, and let's get back to um, Lan and Morel's formula for the degree of a map from P1 to P1. So back to formula. Um, so we'll have F from P1 K to P1 K and we'll pick a rational point at the base and we'll assume again that it's non-constant so we just have finitely many um, pre-images Q1 through Qn and for simplicity we're going to suppose that the Jacobian which is just the derivative is not zero, then the degree of F, um, says Lan and Morel, is don't just take the sign of the Jacobian, take the entire Jacobian and stick it in brackets. And we'll take this transfer. So this, this, this F prime is sitting in the residue field of QI. And we take the sum. So we're also counting the pre-images and they have a weight that's picking up information about their field of definition and the function's behavior there. Um, and then uh, we have the, the very lovely fact that this does not depend on our choice of P. Um, and uh, there's some, some exercises in the notes um, uh, to, to, play around, to play around with this. Um, uh, now, more generally than just a map from P1, Morel is gonna give us a degree map from the sphere, uh, which like in the beginning, we'll view as Pn over Pn minus one, so the top cell of Pn. Um, uh, uh, and its value will also be in the growth indicate group uh, of, of K. Um, so this is going to mean here, this will be um, unstable A1 homotopy classes of maps. which we didn't define, but it's just the, let's say the analog of homotopy classes of maps. Um, like we started with our um, degree function from the functions from SN to SN, but they were homotopy um, classes of uh, pointed maps uh, to Z. Um, this, this degree has the pleasing property that it interacts well, both by taking real and complex points. So if we, um, took the degree, let's say K over K is R. So we have PN over R, let's just copy this. Yeah. 
we'll say K is R here. And we have this degree, the GW of R, an element of GW of R was determined by its rank and its signature. And this gives uh, the, the degrees of the maps on the uh, real points and the, the complex points. So we could take C points and have Pn C over Pn minus one C is um, S2n to S2n. And the, um, the degree in algebraic topology. And we could take real points and get uh, homotopy classes of maps from Sn to Sn and take the degree. Um, uh, from, from algebraic topology. And um, the, the A1 degree simultaneously uh, captures, captures both. Um, there are, are formulas to compute this that doesn't involve um, summing up a lot of terms. So uh, Christoph Kazanov and uh, Thomas Brazelton, Stephen McKean and Sabrina Pauli give formulas for the degree of a list of polynomials in terms of positions. Um, okay, uh, so we're gonna um, say uh, um, more about where this degree map comes from. And for that, uh, we're gonna also say more about Pn over Pn minus one. Um, this quotient doesn't exist in schemes, so it's already an achievement of, of, um, the, of A1 homotopy theory that we are allowed to do this and get something like a, a sphere. Um, let's talk about that. So, uh, the smash product denoted smash is uh, the quotient of the product uh, by um, the, uh, well, I should have said these, these are pointed spaces. So we're gonna have a, a favorite point in Y and that's what that one is supposed to mean. Um, uh, and the favorite point in X, that's what that one is supposed to mean. And we have a smash product like so. Um, and an example is that from classical topology, that if you smash an n sphere and an m sphere, you get an n plus m sphere. And in particular, if you smash s1 n times, you get uh, sm. And the suspension, uh, uh, which it turns out that there's a lot of phenomenon that. Um, sort of behave similarly after uh, sufficiently many suspensions. And this is the smash uh, with, with S1. Um, so uh, P1 can be formed by gluing together two copies of A1. <clears throat> um, so P1 is a standard A1 and then the A1 containing infinity and together their overlap is this GM, so it's a push out. And um, uh, the A1 homotopy theory comes from forcing uh, A1 to be contractible. A1 is like a line. Uh, so um, uh, as part of our introduction to, to A1 homotopy theory, uh, we could make a lot out of the analogy between A1 and a point. That might have been a good thing to do. Um, but, but let's do it now. So we're gonna declare um, that uh, A1 um, is homotopy equivalent to a point. We have C goes to one over Z, C goes to Z. Um, and then uh, it's, uh, um, <laughs> uh, it uh, follows from uh, the formalism of, of homotopy pushouts that when you take 
the homotopy push out of a diagram to points like this, you get the suspension. So the, the homotopy push out of, of this diagram is the S1 suspension of GM. And so we get that that's, that's another way of writing um, uh, P1. Uh, so we'll have uh, uh, several spheres. We're going to have S1 and we'll have GM, which is spec K1 over Z, Z, or A1 minus uh, the origin. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll then be able to talk about SP plus Q alpha or S1 to the P, GM to the Q. And some other notation for this is S P plus Q, um, uh, Q. Um, uh, so uh, another example that will be handy to have is that AN minus the origin is uh, S1 to the N minus one uh, uh, smash with GM uh, to the N. So to see this, uh, we can use induction. We're going to cover, uh, say, A2 minus the origin by its ax by the complement of its axes. Uh, so, and in, in general, we can take A1 minus the origin uh, cross with AN minus one minus the origin. This um, produces a cover. Of a n minus the origin. And this is also a push out. So we're gluing a cover together. And the, this AN um, is contractible and this A1 is. So we have uh, the opportunity to replace this uh, with, um, well, this one say with AN minus one minus the origin. Um, and uh, then we're looking at a push out along the projections. And it's a, a good uh, exercise with, with push-outs um, uh, to identify this as the suspension of uh, X smash Y. Um, and in particular, we get that um, AN times the origin <laughs> is the suspension of these two pieces here. And then by induction, we know what, what these folks are, which shows the plane that we started with uh, up here. Um, so uh, <clears throat> we also have the um, PN over PN minus one. Um, we could start moving this PN minus one in from infinity until it's uh, the PN over PN minus the origin. And then we could get rid of the PN minus one at the, uh, at the end at, at infinity and get uh, that quotient. And then this is contractible here. And it follows um, that uh, it, this is the suspension. So this is um, S1 to the N uh, or GM to the N or P1 smash with itself um, N times. Um, uh, so that was our 
sort of summary of um, ways to think about uh, some spheres. Uh, it uh, turns out to be very useful uh, <laughs> to um, allow in algebraic topology desuspending. So the stable homotopy theory in algebraic in classical algebraic topology uh, permits us to desuspend our spaces, and this gives us um, duality statements and it allows us to represent cohomology. <clears throat> and there are a lot of uh, phenomena which sort of repeat themselves in high enough dimensions or with enough um, suspensions that are then um, computed uh, very effectively um, <clears throat> in, a, in a stable homotopy category. And that is also a useful thing to do um, in uh, A1 homotopy theory. We um, uh, we can desuspend. Uh, we can unsmash uh, with P1, which means we can also unsmash with with S1 and GM. We get a stable homotopy theory uh, that will um, will will denote it as SHK, which is uh, standard. Um, so Morel's degree homomorphism comes from a theorem of Morel and Morel Hop and Hopkins Morel. Um, that says that in the stable homotopy category, the maps from uh, S0 to S0 uh, and remember we had some other ways to talk about these which which looked uh, a lot like spheres. Um, this is this broken deep bit group of, of K. Um, moreover, we can in fact uh, uh, have a beautiful computation of um, the stable homotopy classes of maps to from S0 to all of the GM smash Ns. So whenever they're the same number of copies of, where did our spheres go? Um, whenever the same number of copies of, of S1 and we wanna compute maps from a sphere to a sphere that have the same number of copies of S1, we we wind up we wind up in this in this group. It's a group because stably this will get a suspension in it, and you can add maps from from the suspension of a space. You can smash maps together. So this is actually a ring. And what ring is it? It is the combination of the um, bit ring and the Milner K theory ring that we were looking at on Tuesday. So they combine to this ring here, which is um, Milner bit K theory. So K Milner, which was the Milner K theory. Uh, and uh, W of K combine to This is um, Milner bit K theory. Um, and let, let's define it. Um, so it's a graded associated algebra. Um, uh, it's generators. Um, let, let's look at them as, as maps from, from spheres to itself um, uh, in a minute. But uh, first, let's give an abstract, um, just algebraic definition. So generators, we have um, U, K, Milner, bit one, K for U in K star, and eta corresponding to the Hopf map in degree minus one, uh, subject to the relations. Yes, but K is a field, an arbitrary field. Um, and 
uh, we have the, the Steinberg relation. Um, says u times one minus u is trivial. We have um, the relation that bracket a b is um, bracket a plus bracket b plus eta bracket a bracket b. Um, and eta commutes with the Hopmap commutes with our generators. And the Hopmap times an element that will correspond to our hyperbolic element from before is zero. And um, the hyperbolic element in terms of these, these generators is written eta minus one um, plus two. Um, let's relate this to the growth indicated group. So the mark, um, the growth indicated group of K is isomorphic to K zero Milner bit. And the bracket A element corresponds to um, uh, the hop map from topology is like an S3 to S2. Um, so it's, it's going down in the number um, of like in, actually we're gonna see it in a second, the number of GMs. Um, uh, yeah, um, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. Um, uh, is it's like an A2 minus, minus zero to, to, to P1. Um, and so uh, the angle brackets A corresponds to one plus eta uh, A. And um, so our H, this was one plus minus one. This corresponds to one. Then the one here is actually the additive identity, so it goes away. And then plus another one, so plus one plus eta minus one. Um, uh, let, let's talk about um, how, how these correspond to um, maps between spheres. Here's some things about um, Morel and Morel Hopkins's proof. The map bracket A corresponds to the map from S0. So S0 is two points, and we're working over K. So we this is spec K, disjoint union spec K. And it, the bracket A corresponds to the map from S0 to GM. It has to take the base point to the base point, but the non-base point it will take to the point A. Non-base point will go uh, to, to A. And um, now, um, uh, Ada, um, uh, uh, is the map from A2 minus the origin to P1 that takes X comma Y to the point in P1 determined by, by X and Y. And on the C points, we take C points, we get C2 minus the origin, which looks like a three sphere. And um, that's mapping to CP1 or the two sphere which gives a half map. Um, but on our points, it's a map from the circle to the circle and it's multiplication on by two. And in particular, um, uh, if you're for uh, over R or if you're inside R, uh, eta is not nilpotent. And compared to classical algebraic topology, and um, Nishida's nilpotence, this is, this is different. This is a new thing. Um, uh, all right, let's um, uh, introduce a little bit about the relations and, um, and, uh, and see a little bit more about, about this, this degree. Um, uh, so uh, to do that, um, uh, Let's talk about multiplication on, on GM, and um, we'll need a little bit of 
of homotopy theory. So the smash product was this quotient of the product by um, x times a point union point times y. And we could glue these points together. And the wedge is where you glued them together. base points. Um, and uh, uh, stably, the product is the sum of, of these folks. So if we suspend once, meaning uh, smashing with S1, here we go. Then um, we can uh, we can make a map backwards like this. How do we do that? We have a map from X cross Y to X, which gives us maps like this. This is the, the suspension of the projection of X. And since this is a suspension, we can now add them. So what we'll do is we'll add the suspension of the projection onto X and y, and will give us an expression for the product stably as um, the sum uh, and Morel shows, or Morel and Hopkins show that the product on, on GM is related to the Hopf map. So in our stable homotopy category, the multiplication map uh, on GM that takes a rational point A and a rational point B to the rational point AB. And so it gets called, um, uh, oh, thanks. Thanks, Oliver. Um, uh, so uh, multiplication. Um, uh, it can be expressed in these terms. So stably, we have uh, that the product looks like that, that sum. And a map from a wedge product is just, um, just maps from each of the wedge factors. And this is the identity on GM, the identity on GM, and the Hopf map. Um, so uh, this lemma allows us to, to justify the, um, the way we were looking at uh, angle brackets A. So we've got a map from P1 to P1, sending Z to, to AZ. And um, uh, if you remember the way we defined the degree was we took the inverse images of a point and looked at the derivative. So the degree of this map here is we can take the inverse image of zero, that is zero, we look at the derivative that is a. Well, this has degree a by our by by Lamb and Morel's intuition that we stick the Jacobian inside brackets. Um, uh, and um, but this is also, and we we wanted to see that this corresponded to one plus eta times a, uh, so that we would have that. Uh, GW sitting inside K Milner bit of zero. And so now we can look at this map because um, uh, this is the suspension of um, in GM sending Z to AZ. And um, uh, we can express Z to AZ as the product of A with Z. So um, we take GM cross spec K and map by the identity cross A to GM cross GM and then multiply. Um, then we get to break this map up 
into um, the identity and a constant map, which is trivial, and um, eta, and we get we get we get that. Um, similarly, this lemma here. Um, uh, this lemma also gives the relation um, that a b. So what we get if we um, uh, where are we? If we if we took um, the non-base point to a times b over there is um, what we would get going this way is a plus b plus eta b. So the, the lemma can be used to show the second uh, relation. Um, there's a lot of great things to say about um, the relations. Um, uh, we'll, we'll end with that, um, uh, but uh, this will uh, define a map from our generators and relations description of k Milner bit k theory of k um, to our, our ring of um, these homotopy groups of spheres. And um, then uh, Morell and Hopkins show that this is an isomorphism. And we get this beautiful computation, or they, or they do. And in particular, we get the degree map um, that we've set about to, to count with. So in particular, we can go from unstable homotopy classes to stable and then um, get a degree, even though in fact we are, our isomorphism was really sort of defined the other way. Um, uh, so uh, this was very successful. Um, uh, what can we say about other homotopy groups of spheres? They encode a lot of geometric information. Um, uh, it's uh, not going to make it into this talk, um, uh, but uh, while, while we're here, let's talk about some, some big problems. So um, let's do, do the notation. Uh, so um, this is the zero line of the stable homotopy groups of spheres. And um, uh, some, some other notation is uh, there are these sheaves of homotopy groups and we take global sections um, uh, to, get, to get these these groups. And this is all the zero line. And then we have all the other lines. So the R line, we have the sum over N by N plus R N of, so this is the sphere spectrum sort of all the uh, suspensions, the P1 suspensions of S0. And um, uh, we know a lot of things about homotopy groups of spheres that imply very interesting geometric consequences classically. And um, we are uh, beginning to know a lot of very interesting things um, in A1 homotopy theory um, as well, but maybe fewer than um, you might expect. So what we've got, we've got an Annals of Math paper by um, Oliver Rondix, Marcus Spitzbeck, and Paul Arna Osweir, um, computing the one line uh, in terms of uh, Hermitian K theory and Milner K groups. And they know some things about the two line, 2019 characteristic K not equal to two. Um, and uh, uh, we're, we're left with some, some questions.
So what about over more general rings? Uh, as as uh, you remarked, this, this was over a field. So um, over um, more general rings. What is even the analog of the, the growth indeed fit group um, over uh, Z? Um, uh, so over more general rings. And then um, this is the group that will be using most just in these talks. Um, uh, what about that one? Uh, there's a result from this year by Tom Bachman and Paul Arna Ostfair uh, giving it over Z adjoin one half. Um, so uh, once we um, localize, it's the, the growth and fit ring of Z adjoin one half which is the group completion of the symmetric non-degenerate bilinear forms over the adjoin one half. And uh, watch out over, over non-fields, your presentation is, is not the way to define, um, define that. Um, and what about over more general Dedekind domains and um, Z and um, uh, uh, what do we know about that? We can immediately feed that into um, problems that then then use this to get to get enumerative results. Um, and then uh, we had the one line and the the zero line and the one line. What about um, the rest? Um, maybe with a particular eye to um, um, the successful. Uh, uh, consequences in algebraic topology of knowing things about these groups, they're, they're powerful. Um, uh, now, once we have the stable groups, what about the, the unstable ones? So um, it is not known what kind of stable groups are equal to what kind of unstable groups. So what is there a Freudenthal suspension theorem? So which um, stable um, by star star um, correspond to unstable groups. All right. Um, so so here we're going to use such computations to, to count things, um, but there are other uses. Um, uh, I'm tempted to say something about vector bundles, but I, I don't think um, I don't think I want to try to ad lib. Um, let's uh, keep with the, the 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 goal that we arbitrarily chose for ourselves and get back to counting things. And for this, um, uh, let's uh, talk more about Euler classes. Um, Barge Morel defined one um, right around uh, 1999 uh, in Chow Bit that um, uh, Jean Fazel has a lot to say about. And Morel writes about one as a principal obstruction in his book. Um, Ashok and Fazel compare them. And Mark Levine, uh, as well as uh, Jesse Cass, and uh, myself use them for enumerative um, purposes. Um, and uh, uh, De Glees, Jin, and Khan gave a beautiful functorial approach to Glees, Jin, Fang, Zhu, Jin. And Adil Khan, um, uh, uh, Tom Bachman, and I did a bunch of work um, with a, a growth in Dixair, which was also in um, uh, 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 work of connections with coherent duality in work of Levine uh, Racks, that, that actually Mike Hopkins was, um, was eyeballing one time when I, when I uh, gave a talk, but they do a lot of uh, other things like the motivic gauss um, uh theorem. And there, there, there are many interesting um, points of view on, on this class. Let's start with one of them. Um, so uh, let's give uh, X a smooth a K scheme of dimension D. Uh, 
and uh, let's take a, a rank uh, R vector bundle. Um, and uh, we need an orientation so that, um, well, from a certain point of view, so that when we choose local coordinates, we can't uh, accidentally swap an x1 to a minus x1 and change the sign of our determinant. So um, uh, V is gonna be oriented by the following data. Um, uh, a line bundle L and an isomorphism phi where um, L X um, is a line bundle and uh, the determinant of V is identified by our particular isomorphism phi with the square. Um, and then we can talk about X being oriented when its tangent uh, bundle is. And um, uh, what we'll need to take an Euler number um, is a relative orientation. So V to X um, is relatively oriented. Um, when the bundle where the Jacobian lives, the Jacobian of the zeros, it's a determinant of a bunch of derivatives that's a map from the determinant of the tangent bundle to the determinant of V, um, where the determinant is the highest wedge power. Um, so for example, if you have um, X is PN uh, or the Grassmannian, Kirsten, you didn't finish yes. the sentence. When Hom is what? Uh, is, is, is oriented. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm here. Um, so I. Uh, the Grassmannian, uh, its tangent bundle is HOM from the um, tautological to the, the quotient. So, and if you remember our um, conventions, this is the Grassmannian parameterizing because the parity is what matters. Uh, PMs in PN. So let's be particular about which, which parity we're having. So this one kind of agrees with that. Um, then uh, the determinant of the tangent bundles uh, dual, this is the, the cotangent bundle, uh, uh, is uh, O of minus, um, uh, minus N uh, minus one. Um, so X is orientable if and only if N is odd. Um, and ON on P1 is relatively orientable if and only if uh, N is even. Um, so things are positive over, so there's a question in the chat about um, uh, a square root of the determinant. Um, uh, if, if we take our intuition from, from the reals, um, we, we want to know when the determinant of our coordinates um, uh, doesn't, doesn't change sign. Um, so if we, if we took a new basis, we want the determinant of the basis change uh, matrix to still be positive if we're gonna get the same um, sign of the, of the Jacobian. Um, so the being positive is the same thing as being a square. on P1 is relatively orientable um, if and only if um, N is even. Um, all right, so uh, here comes 
here comes our, our, our number in GW of K. And this, this number is, um, uh, uh, it's, it's the analog of viewing a cohomology class in top dimension as something in Z, um, except now Z is, is replaced by, um, by GW of K. Um, so uh, let's suppose again, that uh, X over K um, is a smooth, a proper scheme of dimension D uh, and B to X with F um, is a rank D vector bundle. It's relatively oriented. Um, by this line bundle and this isomorphism. Um, and let's give ourselves a section that has isolated zeros. And in fact, so such that, um, let's have the, the isolated zeros actually have multiplicity one. So we're imagining our Jacobian is, is not zero. Um, so such that a way to say that is F equals zero consists of um, multiplicity one zeros um, and equivalently um, we have that this this map from the tangent space to v so let's say for all x that is a zero um, when when you have a, a zero of a section you get an induced map from the tangent space of x to the tangent space of um, f of x at v. But since this is x zero, this um, using the zero section, this tangent space is just the tangent space of x at the point plus the fiber of, of the vector space. And so we get, we get a map from the tangent space to the, the, the fiber of the, um, uh, of the vector bundle. So this is what we have when we have a zero. And this map has non-vanishing determinants of the map um, on tangent spaces as non-vanishing determinants. Um, so then we're gonna make our Euler number be the sum of all those Jacobian determinants over the zeros. So um, the Euler number of our vector bundle, and let's remember its orientation or, or forget it if it's clear. Um, and with respect to a section, Um, let's call it N, even though it's sort of E as well. Um, this, this, this Euler number is the sum over the zeros. Of um, uh, the, the degree of F used as a function. And so here are two points of view on it. So the degree XF can be computed Um, choose local coordinates. And that's really an, a tall map from an open neighborhood of your scheme to AN. So choose local coordinates. And um, we want it to be an isomorphism on residue fields at the point we're interested in. Let's call this Nesnevich coordinates um, on X and a local trivialization. Of v, um, which are compatible with the orientation. Let's omit the, the definition of that with, there's the relative orientation. 
um, then you can express it as a function. This, now, X doesn't have to locally be some sort of affine space, um, but nonetheless, um, you can jiggle it a little bit and it won't matter. So then you can write F as a function from the dimension from A to the dimension of X. So X is looking in these Nisnevich coordinates. It's like a, an open set of that um, to uh, A to the D. And we can then make our Jacobian determinant. JF is the determinant of FI over XJ. We had this assumption that our zeros were multiplicity one. So we get that this is not zero. This is in the residue field. Um, of, um, uh, oh, thanks everybody, um, uh, in, the, in the residue field uh, of X, and then um, the degree XF is the um, transfer of the Jacobian at X. And since, um, uh, it's 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 um, it, it raised suspicions to say this, although it's actually okay. Um, there's here's an equivalent point of view. So, um, so or equivalently, we have this um, this map, the induced map on tangent spaces from our our section um, F that we were we were mentioning above that start looking at like a map from the tangent space of X to the fiber of V, um, then uh, we can define J, J of F of X to be the determinant of this map, which is then a map from the determinant of this vector space to the determinant of this vector space. They're, they're all the same dimension now. So the determinant, the, the dimension of X is the rank of V now, so the determinant is the R uh, or the Dth, right? Um, the Dth wedge power. And our orientation precisely gave us information about this. So um, the orientation um, gives an isomorphism. between this Hom space containing the Jacobian and the square of a line bundle. Um, so if we pick any basis for this, our Jacobian just becomes a number. But if we switch basis, the corresponding number changes by a square, since this is the square here. So um, this actually gives, so here's J of F of X is sitting in here, but this is induces a well-defined element of K of X over K of X is unit squared. So it induces a well-defined element that may will also call J F of X um, of um, K of X. It's like trivialization of, of L of X over, um, K of X is units squared. Um, uh, by choosing a trivialization. Of L of X and this agrees with the above. Um, uh, uh, okay, so um, we have we have four minutes. I had planned to talk about what happens if the zeros are not simple, um, but that's that's a longer discussion than it's going to fit here. Um, uh, let's so. Um, question. Um, what happens 
we'll, we'll set it, we'll, we'll ask the question this time, we'll answer it next time. Um, if the zeros of F are not multiplicity one, we were missing this in differential topology as well. So CF, we had said that um, in differential topology, um, the degree was one if the Jacobian was positive and minus one if the Jacobian was negative. And uh, so then what happens when the Jacobian is zero? Um, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, something happens. Um, so uh, we can use this um, to answer a further question that, that sort of came up at, at the beginning of the talk. So, so answer will be next time. Um, uh, and um, the, the fact that it's possible to answer and there's a good way to interpolate um, between the quadratic form that, that's giving the Jacobian and giving the local degree um, as, uh, um, as, you, as your zeros come together um, gives us some leverage on this question. So why is the Euler number um, and the F uh, independent um, of the section F. In our four lines example, that's uh, analogous to saying that the answer two works for any of those four lines that you chose. Um, uh, so the answer one coming from this is that um, sections um, with isolated zeros Uh, can often be connected by families of such sections of sections whose zeros are isolated, but they might be higher multiplicity. Uh, um, so our, our sections will be parameterized by an A1 and it'll lead to uh, an element of the growth and bit group of the functions on A1 or K of X, um, but this by A1 invariance of, uh, of the growth and bit group or by Harder's theorem will give us a well-defined Euler number. Um, this, however, is a pain in the neck and I would know. Um, so uh, alternatively, we can um, introduce the Euler class. So inspired by Degliz Jin Khan um, and, and Mark Levine's uh, and John Pizel's um, uh, um, perspective. So uh, another way to get rid of this dependence on the section is to have an Euler class and a cohomology theory. So Euler number is, um, push forward uh, of an Euler class who's got values and in interesting cohomology theories um, uh, like the one um, Frederick de Gliese, uh ended with um, uh, in, in his talk. Um, and uh, then we'll have for free and um, much uh, more useful techniques for computation. Um, uh, to control um, this expression. So uh, we will set that up and um, get this control, uh, uh, those, those, those wonderful, powerful tools, um, but I, I'm over, so, so let's, let's end here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kirsten, for a wonderful lecture. Let's uh, thank her either by clapping a reel or uh, with an icon.
So are there any questions? I had a question um, and I might have just overread into like an offhanded remark you made, but when you introduced our notion of transfer here, you said it was related to the stuff that uh, DeGlees talked about and this, this is all very new stuff to me. So um, can you say more about how those two things are related to what happened in the last lecture? Yes, um, uh, so um, uh, the, the, the stable homotopy groups of spheres have to have a whole bunch of transfers. And which transfers you have um, uh, is, is an interesting question. Um, we, we saw some transfers uh, that, you, that you have to get. Um, the, uh, the transfers here, it's, um, uh, uh, here they're coming from the, uh, looking at this, the, the sphere is gonna map to, um, uh, uh, to Hermitian K theory, and uh, Hermitian K theory uh, has as its as its K zero these um, bilinear forms on on vector bundles, and um, as a, a nice point of view um, uh, due to uh, um, Mara Yackerson and Mark Wa and Elvin Almonto and Sus Nilo and um, Khan. Um, that, that gives you a way uh, to look at Hermitian K-theory as this kind of uniform, uh, sort of universal thing with uh, transfers when you have coherent duality sort of push forwards. So what, what we've done by this trace formula is um, sort of looked, we looked at that vector space over E and then we get the vector space just over K. It's kind of like pushing forward, um, just, just looking at it like that and composing with this trace, this sort of coherent duality thing. And the, um, there's a, a, a very lovely characterization of a Hermitian K theory as this thing that has transfers within um, uh, a, a beautiful set of work on recognition principles for um, for, for cohomology theories. It's um, uh, well, well, that's one answer. It's probably a little convoluted in this. You could you could say a lot about about that answer. Maybe there's um, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to that. Okay, okay, thank you. Oh, maybe I'll advertise. The... Sorry, sorry, I, I want to advertise sorry. one thing. So that's for these infinite P1 loop spaces and connected to that big open problem of we don't have a Freudenthal suspension theorem is do you want it to characterize for a finite P1 loop space? It's another very uh, exciting sort of um, uh, a possibility in, in the general field. Are there any further questions? Maybe um, relating to this question of Rodenthal suspension, do we even know if you know smashing something a sufficiently large number of times ever stabilizes? Um, uh, so, uh, is there a finite number, but that finite number might grow arbitrarily with the connectivity, um, such that you stabilize, um, Oliver, can you, can you take that one? Well, I guess the, the problem is that we don't know a finite generation of, of the groups involved there. Yeah, but, um. Uh, for, for otherwise you 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 would get uh, you would get a stabilization of these coordinates. Uh, some concrete uh, computations done um, also by, by Kirsten and uh, co-authors, which uh, indicate that stabilization occurs and uh, behaves rather similar to, to what happens in topology if, if you combine what happens at uh, sort of complex and, and real points. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a very um, interesting open, open problem. Yeah, are there further questions? 
Yes. Um, do you manage to recover these very classical results like 27 lines on a smooth hypersurface in P3? I'm so glad you asked that question. We will Friday. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay, so I think this is a, is a good teaser for Kirsten's next lecture on Friday morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. Uh, so let's thank her again, but don't forget there's a problem and discussion session with experts in the field starting in about eight minutes. Thanks again, Kirsten.